The term net positive suction head, or NPSH, may, may seem a little forbidding at first, but if we just have a look at it, the concepts that it includes are fairly simple. If we have low inlet pressure combined with high pump speeds, that combination can result in very low pressure on the blades. If that pressure gets too low, then the liquid in the pump will boil. Having the liquid boil is not so bad. It's not great for performance. But the big thing is when the pressure rises again, those bubbles will collapse. And the collapse of those bubbles is, in combination with the boiling, what's referred to as cavitation. It's not the boiling so much that causes the problem, but when those bubbles collapse, right next to the blade, a little jet comes down out of the bubble and impacts the blade surface with enormous velocity. And that results in damage to the blade and pitting at the blade. And you can see this in some high-speed video that you, uh, you could find elsewhere on the course website. So that cavitation leads to impeller damage. And very short periods of cavitation can lead to enough impeller damage to severely impact the performance of the pump or even lead to needing to take the pump out of service and replace it. So as a consequence of pump design, in order to get the performance that we're looking for, and the flow speed of the liquid going through the pump, the two of those in combination will result in a minimum inlet pressure that we can tolerate compared to the vapor pressure in order to avoid cavitation. So if we can just keep the inlet pressure or the suction pressure enough above the vapor pressure, then we won't have any boiling and then we won't have any bubbles collapsing, we won't have any cavitation, and we won't have any cavitation damage. And the manufacturer will specify what this minimum is in order to avoid cavitation for a particular pump design at a particular flow rate as the NPSH, the net positive suction head, required. And as long as you meet that requirement, then things will be okay. Now the net positive suction head is put in terms of head or elevation, increase in height, uh, for the same reasons that we're using head for all of our, uh, our pump calculations. And it's just the pressure in the suction of the pump minus the vapor pressure for the fluid at that particular temperature divided by rho g to put it in terms of head instead of in terms of pressure. Now let's look at how we calculate this. Suppose we had our liquid just sitting in the lake. Suppose it's lake water. We've got atmospheric pressure here. We've got our pump that's drawing from a pipe that's some distance HS below the water. Well, that'll increase the suction pressure. That's good. And it goes into the pump. And if we keep the pump close and keep this piping short, that'll be good because that will keep the, uh, the pressure as high as we possibly can at the inlet to the pump. So that'll be good. So we can then calculate the NPSH that we have available. That is the actual NPSH that we'll have at the suction of the pump. As in this case, it'll be atmospheric pressure divided by rho g. That's what we had here. It'll go up by HS. So the pressure's higher down here. We've got more head down here. But then as it goes into the pipe, it's going to accelerate. So by Bernoulli, we're going to have to allow for the dynamic head, the suction velocity squared divided by 2G. That's the pressure drop that we see as we accelerate the flow from stationary out here into the pipe, minus any losses that we have along the way from the entry to the pipe over to the suction of the pump, 
minus any minor losses that we have along here, for instance, this entrance loss, and if we had any elbows in here, we'd have to account for that. Then minus the vapor pressure of the fluid at the current temperature of that, that liquid divided by rho g. So if we've done our piping design, we should be able to figure out what all of these things are in order to figure out how much NPSH we've got available. And then the test is simple. We just need to make sure that the NPSH available must be greater than the NPSH required that we got from the manufacturer. If we take care to make sure that that relationship is met, then we will avoid cavitation. If we succeed in avoiding cavitation, we're going to succeed in avoiding this impeller damage, and all is going to be right with the world. Our pump is going to last a good long time, maybe a hundred years like some of those pumps in the, uh, in the water plant. So let's think about what's good to avoid cavitation. Good things? Well, if the pump is low, the further below the surface of the water, the bigger HS is, the higher the pressure is going to be at the inlet. So that's good. What would make things worse? If we move the pump up to here, for example, we'd have a negative value for HS. We'd have a pressure that was lower than atmospheric pressure at the inlet. That would be bad. So good, have the pump low. Put the pump in the basement like they do at the water plant. The bad opposite, of course, would be put the pump up high on the top floor of the building. It's not going to work so well. Good. If the liquid is cold, then the vapor pressure will be lower and we'll have more NPSH available. So cold fluids, always put your pump on the cold side of the circuit. If there's a heater in the circuit, always make sure you put your pump on the cold side of the heater. On the other hand, if the fluid is hot, that's going to make it more difficult to design your pumping system to avoid cavitation. Low suction losses will be good. If we've got a short pipe, that'll be good. If we manage to avoid having a whole lot of fittings and valves in here on the suction side, that'll be good. Anything that allows us to have low suction losses is going to increase the pressure and increase the NPSH that we've got available. On the other hand, bad. A long length of pipe there with a whole lot of fittings in it, we'd have high suction losses and we could run into NPSH problems. We could get cavitation and wind up damaging our impeller and reducing the life of our pipe, or our pump rather, quite significantly. One more thing that could be good, if we can reduce this dynamic head, if we can lower the suction velocity, then that is going to re reduce the NPSH. So a lower su suction velocity, what that translates into is if the pump is designed with a larger pipe inlet, then the velocity coming into the pump will be lower and we'll be able to get away with less NPSH. So that's why you'll often see that the inlet nozzle on a pump, the inlet pipe connection is actually larger than the discharge pipe connection. That's to allow for the NPSH and to keep the NPSH requirement low. Of course, the opposite is bad. If we have a high suction velocity, then we may have NPSH problems. Now, any of these things may turn out to be okay as long as we meet this requirement. Once we've met the requirement that we've got, a, got more NPSH available than is required, we will have no cavitation. And there's no major uh, advantage in then having more NPSH available, uh, except as it gives you a little bit of a safety buffer. So once you've reached the NPSH available that being larger than the NPSH required, you've avoided cavitation and you've, you've met the design objectives. So the key thing here is we're trying to prevent cavitation because of the damage it does. We need to make sure that the pressure at the inlet to the pump is high enough. We're going to go to the manufacturer to find out what the NPSH required is. 
And once we know what the NPSH required is, we're going to do all of these things as well as we can until we get to the point where the NPSH we have available is well above the NPSH required by the manufacturer. Then we'll have done our design job well and we can set that aside and go worry about other design elements in our piping system. So that's all you really need to know about net positive suction head.